So I made a game. No, not this time. Welcome back. Or if you're new here, welcome. I'm Julie. I'm a 3D artist, game developer wannabe, and a Twitch streamer. I've been using Blender for about two years now, and I decided to share my Blender setup process with you. So what I do after I install Blender and before I can start working, let's just get into the video. Let's start with preferences. In system change, what device you're rendering on. If you have a good GPU, it doesn't make sense not to render on that good GPU. In interface, disable splash screen. That was the first thing that we saw when we opened Blender. You don't need that. Now I changed some key bindings. First, I changed space from plane and animation to searching because I keep accidentally hitting it and playing an animation in the background when you don't need to. It's not great. The only other key binding that I change is select linked. I use it all the time and it's not really convenient for me to press L without looking at the keyboard. So I changed it to C. Now let's talk add-ons. There are two external add-ons that I use, screencast keys for showing what keys I'm pressing in Blender. Very important if you're streaming and recording, not necessary if you're not doing those things. Another one is Quick Menu by Passive Star. It's an add-on that allows you to access some of the features that are a little bit more hidden away in Blender and make them faster to reach. Passive made a separate video in Quick Menu, so if that sounds interesting, I'll link his video below. Onto default add-ons that I enable. Extra objects for both curve and mesh. The mesh one allows me to add a single vertex that I do a lot. For example, this is how I make trees, add a single vertex, extrude it, add a skin modifier. If you've watched Polygon Runway, you know what I'm talking about. And extra objects for curves allows you to add those cool spirals. Another useful add-on is loop tools. I use it to make rectangular loop into a circle like this. I also enable Node Wrangler. It allows you to drag a node onto a noodle to automatically connect it. Besides that, it allows you to add all the texture maps that you need to a material with just one click of a button. Quickly about quick favorites. It's a list of your favorite commands that you make yourself. You access them by pressing Q and you add to it by right clicking on the command, add to quick favorites. What I have in my quick favorites. Merge by distance and select more and less. Quick favorites menu is different in different modes. That was in edit mode. In object mode, I have origin to the center of geometry command in my quick favorites. Now onto the scene itself. Let's remove all the default thingies. I add a background plane that looks like this. It's supposed to imitate that backdrop in photo studios. I add a camera directly in front of the background plane. Did you know that if you press GG when you move the camera, it's going to move on its local Z axis, so closer or further away from the subjects it's pointing at? If you wanted me to make a video about my favorite hotkeys, let me know. I'll do that. Spoilers. My favorite one is Control F F S. Do you know what it does? Tell me in the comments below. I changed the resolution to 2000 by 2000. In the render settings, I also changed frame rate to 60 FPS. I'm changing the file format to RGBA. This will allow me to save images with transparent background if I want to. Two hours later, camera died. I switched from Eevee to Cycles. Usually I render in Cycles pretty much everything, except for animations. I always turn on the noiser, both for the viewport and for the render. If you have NVIDIA graphics card, use OptiX denoiser. It's just magical, not sponsored, but I made videos for NVIDIA's YouTube channel. They're about Blender. Check them out. Link somewhere. And again, here in the rendering tab, make sure that you're rendering on GPU if you want to. Now onto the scene panel. This is where the magic happens, also known as Nishita Sky Texture. It's basically an HDRI that you can adjust the way you want to. You can change sun rotation, elevation, intensity, and also things like size of the sun. Also add a rim light. It's this edge highlight around your character or whatever you're rendering. It helps to make it pop against the background. So now in any of my files, when I switch to rendered mode for the first time, this is what I would get. I put the background light on the camera to a separate collection, hide it. Also, I add this cursor thingy button. It lets you choose whether the objects are going to be selectable or not. Very convenient. Onto the solid mode. That's the mode I see the most for 90% of the time when I'm modeling. Two things here in the viewport shading. Cavity. That's the good stuff. It makes your edges look brighter and valleys darker. Basically makes the shape more readable. Very good. Also in viewport shading, backface culling. It allows you to see which faces are inverted without you having to go to check face orientation constantly. Probably the last thing I add to my default file are some nodes in compositing. I add ambient occlusion and glare. To get ambient occlusion working, first you need to enable it in layers panel. The simplest way to add ambient occlusion is to add a mix node, 
set it to multiply and drag image and ambient occlusion into the pins. Ambient occlusion output is pretty noisy, so I add a denoise. We want to add ambient occlusion only to the shadows, so for that we add a color ramp, set it up like so, and here's the difference that we get. It looks a little bit too artificial when the shadows that we add are just pure black, so I add a little bit of a purple tint to the shadows using color balance node. Here's the comparison side by side. On the right there is ambient occlusion added to the image and on the left there isn't. As you can see the difference is pretty subtle. You can definitely set it up to be stronger if you want to, but I prefer just a little bit of ambient occlusion and of course I add bloom, because bloom is the best. In Blender to add bloom you add a glare note. Again I set it to be very subtle because we're thinking about default file and not any scene in particular. And here's the difference that we get. Now I go to File, Defaults, and save my startup file. Now when you restart Blender, this is what it's gonna look like, every time you open it. Very convenient. I actually also save this file as a file and keep a copy of it, and if you want to make any changes, just make them and save it again, and it's gonna work. Like for example, I forgot to press T to hide the menu on the left, hide the backgrounds in the camera, and get rid of the viewport gizmos, because I never use them. And the last thing is to remove all the necessary tabs on top. The only tabs that I leave are layout, UV editing, texture paint, shading, animation, and compositing. That's it for today's video. I hope it helped you if you're new to Blender. If there was a feature that you didn't know about and you liked, let me know in the comments down below. I'll see you in the next video, where we're gonna be modeling something very cute. Subscribe! Bye!